again uh, model one is uh, that uh, the sequence contains only primary numbers and model two is that it contains uh, um, not only uh, prime numbers and uh, now base uh, formula looks like this and uh, I need a prior here and I um, well, the prior should be so that it sums up the knowledge when Fermat uh, found his uh, sequence. And it's a bit tricky to find anything like that, so uh, I just tried out a few sequences, uh, 12 of them. And I managed to show that either they were not um, increasing or they were uh, not uh, only prime numbers, actually none of them were prime, uh, only prime numbers. Uh, so it's fair to say that the probability is less than uh, 50%. In fact I uh, removed a few that was too obvious and uh, not prime. Um, so I I tried a conservative measure. I gave uh, model 1 a, a, a prior probability of 10%. It's a, it's a bit conservative. Uh, the data indicates, or the prior uh, uh, trials indicate that it might be lower. Uh, and here's a pie chart showing, uh, showing uh, this prior. Interesting factoid. Even though I've been uh, studying uh, statistics for quite some time now, this is the first time I've uh, made pie charts. And now I use uh, base formula and I use it sequentially, so I uh, put in one and one uh, data. So first I note that uh, f of zero is prime. And, well, uh, the probability of getting a prime uh, here is one in model one and model two so this is not evidence for anything so the probability is still 10 percent then i use the fact that uh, f of uh, one is also prime and uh, now i get 12.9 uh, percent and i can step through this sequentially um, f of two to f of zero is prime uh, yields uh, a posterior probability of 25.3% and I use this as a prior for the next measurement namely that uh, f of 3 is prime and I get uh, a 61.2% probability of model 1 being correct and at last uh, as far as Fermat goes uh, I calculated the posterior probability when f 4 is prime and I got 94% uh, probability for model 1 as you can see in the prime uh, pie chart and uh, I could have instead of doing this sequentially I could just have plugged in uh, the entire data set as far as Fermat goes and gotten the same answer of course and what happens if we now calculate the next thing uh, when uh, we factor in that uh, f of 5 is not prime? And it makes sense, you get 0% uh, probability that uh, model 1 is correct. I mean, it's been falsified completely. And you get a 100% probability of model 2 being uh, correct which is of course the opposite thing, so it works. Uh, here is the evolution of probability for uh, model 1 for the incoming data. So we start at 10%, uh, 10% for uh, n equal to 0, for n equal to 1 it rises and then it rises and rises and then suddenly collapses us at uh, n equal to 5. And um, you can look at the opposite pro probability, the probability for model 2. And uh, 
it sinks and sinks and then suddenly at uh, n equal to 5 which is the evidence for that uh, mm, hypothesis it jumps up to uh, 100% and so it works but uh, you get a 6% uh, probability of M2 being correct uh, for the numbers that Fermat had and what this means is that uh, well you can look at this like this uh, in 6% of the instances where you get uh, this convincing data uh, data this, uh, that is uh, as convincing as uh, the data that Fermat has, you will be wrong in your inference. So uh, now you see that uh, it's not a biggie. Uh, you don't need to search for to find such a failed inference. And the inference itself, if you do it statistically, will indicate that. So that's pretty uh, interesting, I think. Now, as I mentioned, I was a little bit uncertain about um, how to formulate the uh, prior probability for um, uh, model 1 being correct. And the truly Bayesian way to deal with this is to put a probability, our a probability measure, on that prior probability. This is called the uh, hierarchical. Uh, uh, modeling and now I start out with a non-informal uh, flat distribution and then I feed into it the data from the pre-analysis 12 uh, failed uh, sequences and I get a prior distribution looking like this this is called the beta distribution and uh, when I then plug in the formula for, uh, for the posterior probability uh, for n equal to 0 to 4, I get uh, this um, distribution. And with this more sophisticated analysis, I get an estimated probability of being wrong, uh, which is equal to 19%. So you will really not have to look far to find uh, similar examples. Uh, so again, it works and it works even better because it tells you uh, in a more straightforward sense how often you would expect to, uh, your inference to go wrong uh, this way. Uh, and the clue here is that the data set was not very large. Uh, in science you can repeat your measurement as many times as you like. I think I will uh, stop here. Um, if this is interesting, uh, please tell me. If this is not interesting, please tell me. If you think this is wrong, please tell me. If you think this should not at all be shown on uh, YouTube, tell me. I want to know. Okay, that's it. Bye for now.